This is Alex with the Biogen Virtual Community Lab, and I'm going to bring you another explained video around our lava lamps that we made. So uh, there's another video that talks about the hydrophilic and hydrophobic interactions going on with our lava lamps. So make sure you check that out as well. But in this video, we're going to focus on the reaction between that sodium bicarbonate and that citric acid. Um, whether or not you actually used those compounds or you used Alka-Seltzer, it was the same reaction taking place. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what that looks like and how that created the bubbles in our lava lamp. So sodium bicarbonate is our base in this reaction, right? And citric acid is the acid that we used. So when you combine a base and an acid, you get a reaction. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the um, chemical formula for both of these compounds and then show you what reaction takes place and, and how their, their atoms sort of rearrange to create our lava lamp bubbles. So sodium bicarbonate is sodium, which is Na, and it's HCO3. And then we added that to citric acid, which is C6H8O7. And in order for our reaction to balance, we're going to need three of these molecules for every one of these molecules. So this arrow means that a reaction takes place. So when we added these two molecules together, um, we added the powders together and then we put it in the water, right? And the water is what caused the reaction. So it allowed these two things to dissolve and to come into contact with one another. So what happened um, when that happens is that you get all these new products. So these atoms sort of rearrange themselves in different ways. So you end up actually getting water. You end up getting three of those. So three water molecules were made. So we wouldn't have seen that, right? Because it was already in water. So it just made a little bit more water molecules. And then it also makes the ions. So when we think about something like salt, which is sodium chlorine um, ions, sodium chloride ions, then when we dissolve that into water, the sodium ions and the chloride ions are sort of just floating around in that water. So that's why salt dissolves. So that's the same thing that's happening here. So when, when these things rearrange, they break off into their little ions. So you end up with sodium ion. So we end up with three of those, which is positively charged. And then we end up with a citric acid ion. Um, so that is C6H5O7, and that has a negative three charge. So the reason they're ions is because they have these positive and negative charges, and basically they're just floating around in the water. So we didn't see those when we made the reaction. That It's not something we can see. They're just little atoms that are floating around down in that water. So then the last... Um, product of this reaction is the one that really matters for us. So it is CO2. We ended up getting three of those as well. So CO2, as you may know, is carbon dioxide. So you've probably heard of carbon dioxide, right? It's the gas that when you breathe oxygen in, you release carbon dioxide. So Every time you exhale, you're releasing carbon dioxide into the air. And um, plants actually take carbon dioxide and release oxygen, right? So you've heard of carbon dioxide. And what it is is a gas. And what that means is, is that when you have it in liquid, it is going to want to try to be coming out of the liquid and into the air. So when this reaction took place, so when we had the, the sodium bicarbonate and the citric acid down here, and they came in contact with each other, and this reaction happened. This, these carbon dioxide molecules were immediately wanting to get out and get out. So that's why we had to leave the lid off, right? So they pushed up through the oil, and they got out into the air. And you maybe even like heard a little bit of like a, a fizzing noise. That was those, those gas molecules escaping into the air. So because that happened so fast and because they really are trying to get out, some of these water bubbles kind of got carried up with that. So as the gas is rising up through the oil, it carries some water with it 
just because it's going so fast, it pushes that water up. So that's why you saw those blue water bubbles coming up through your oil. And then maybe you saw some more blue water bubbles coming back down. So that was after that carbon dioxide gas releases into the air, those water bubbles that are now sitting on top of the oil, and we know that water doesn't like oil, so it immediately sunk back down in the water. So that's why some of the bubbles you saw were going up and being carried by that carbon dioxide, and some of the water bubbles that you saw were going down because they had released the carbon dioxide and they were trying to get back to their water. So that's a little bit more about the science behind what's happening inside your lava lamp every time you put that um, Alka-Seltzer in there, you put that sodium bicarbonate and that citric acid down in there. They're reacting to, to make these products and specifically this carbon dioxide that makes our really cool lava lamp bubbles. So comment below if you have any questions, if there's anything else you want to know about acid-base reactions or about your lava lamp. Um, make sure that you are sharing pictures and videos of your lava lamp so we can all see what you're doing. Um, and I'll see you next time. Have a great day. Thank you.